His awesome power. His awesome power. Ed and Jennifer will tell you that uh, our quarterback, Pat Mahomes, predicted that we would go 20 and 0 this season. And you will notice that we are not yet at 500, though we're counting on the New York Giants to help us get to 500. Somewhere along the line, plans have gone amiss, problems have occurred, fumbles have happened, interceptions are in abundance, and the season has been a disappointment. And I would like to tell you why. They are just men. Big men, strong men, fast men, but they are just men. And in spite of anything that you might have heard from any other place or pulpit, it's not about us. It's about Him. Hallelujah. Our God is undefeated, will always be undefeated. Hallelujah. I love the words of our Lord as he was ready to be taken up into heaven by a cloud into glory, to sit at the right hand of God. Jesus says these words in the Gospel of Matthew, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I love that verse. It fills my heart with strength and courage in abundance to know that Jesus is Lord and that all power is his. He sits at the right hand of God where he ever lives to make intercession for the saints. Hallelujah. Thank God our Lord Jesus is the victor always. All power is his in heaven and earth. This is not the time for giving up. This is the time for holding on. It's not the time to be weak. It's the time to be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Because it is all about him. My favorite thing to do with my grandson is one of the favorite things is to ask him to show his muscles. He's got good muscles. And he's proud of them. Another thing I love about all my grandchildren, of course, but when they throw their arms around your neck and say, I love you, Grandpa. So I like both sides of that. I like the, and I like those same arms around my neck. And that's really helps us to understand the nature of our God. Our God is omnipotent. He's strong. He's a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. Hallelujah. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among gods, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Who is like unto thee? There is no one like our God. He's strong, and at the same time, our God is love. Our God is love. And so all that you need today is in him. He has the power, and we have been given his power in the name of Jesus. And we have his confidence, his love that surrounds our lives today. So be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This morning we're in the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, and we begin with this line, His word was with power. Jesus is noted as not teaching as the scribes and the others. He is one with power and authority. He has authority behind his teaching and behind his preaching. Luke chapter 4 and verse 32 says, and they were astonished. That word astonished in our English vernacular means one thing, but really it means a great fear rested upon these people. They were astonished. They were sore amazed. They were terrified, actually. Astonished at his doctrine. I said at his 
doctrine. I am thankful to be a part of a fellowship, the Assemblies of God. I am thankful to be a part of this local church where we believe that every word in God's holy word, the Bible, is true. It was written just the way God intended it to be written. It is infallible. It is inerrant. It is inspired. His word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Thank God it's a light into our path, a light into our feet. Hallelujah. And I'll hide his word in my heart. Thank God for the doctrines of the Bible. I'm proud to be a part of a church that believes if your opinion disagrees with the Bible, the Bible's true, and your opinion is wrong. God's word is truth. Thy word is truth. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Would you say it, please? His word was with power. Hallelujah. Thank God. The Apostle Paul writes in an epistle that we should avoid those that have a form of godliness, just a form of godliness, but deny what? The power thereof. Here I find that the word of Jesus was with power. It was on a given occasion when a man pleads for his servant's life as he approaches Jesus, and he says to Jesus, I'm a man in authority, and if I speak a word, they go and they do what I tell them to do. So, Lord, just speak the word, and your servant will be healed. And indeed, it happened in that moment. The word of, God, the word of Jesus is spoken, and it was with power, and that man was healed. Here in this story in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. I was very convinced as a young pastor, a young preacher, that demons do not hide behind every door. There are no demons in my house. They're not welcome. They're not allowed. The blood of Jesus covers my house. And so I often got a little irritated when people thought about a demon of this and a demon of that, and here's a demon, and there's a demon, and am I as a Christian demon-possessed? And the answer to that is, no, you're not. However, it must be said, as America has opened its heart to all kinds of evils. Yes, I'm preaching about Halloween. On Halloween, America has opened its mind, its heart, and its door to every kind of deception and evil that is on the planet. America and American churches have told the devil, come on in. You're welcome here. Devil, you are not welcome here. My Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not mighty, they are not, not carnal, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations. Hallelujah. My Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. My Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Devil, you are not welcome here. You're not welcome in my home. My, 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 my. We've opened ourselves to spirits and unclean devils throughout our land. This particular one, this man with an unclean devil cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? I love this one. You ready for this? The demon says, Art thou come to destroy us? I have the answer to that question. Yes, he has. He kicked you out of heaven, third of the angels. These demons, they are 
going to be destroyed, and they knew that Jesus could do it, not later. They knew he could do it right then. Another place in the Gospels, it says, have you come to send us to the abyss before our time? See, they know their destination. They know their doom. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And they confess this. I know thee who art, thou art the Holy One of God. Did you hear the confession of demons? They confess that Jesus is the Holy One of God. Men may not know it, but the demons know it. There are several things that I like about this story that we know to be true. And one of those things is, is that demons are afraid of Jesus. And Jesus is not afraid of demons. Hallelujah. Just his word, he could send them to the abyss to be destroyed. I like the fact that this man possessed of a demon was not controlled by demons to the point where he could not be in the presence of Jesus. I'd like for you to think about that. Demons, plural, would probably not like this man to come into Jesus' presence. But there he is. And where was he in verse 33? He was in the synagogue. Do you think it was by happenstance or coincidence that he was there in the synagogue where Jesus was? <laughs> no. The fulfillment of Isaiah 61 has already taken place here. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, hath anointed me, and speaks of the purpose and mission of Christ. And here comes this man. The unclean devil is present and speaks to Jesus. And I love the fact that demons confess that Jesus is the Holy One of God. Hmm. Everything in heaven, earth, and under the earth will confess that Jesus is Lord. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is Lord today? I do. I pray the last words that come out of my mouth before I die or before the rapture, I pray the last three words that come out of my mouth is this, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. Can I give you a modern version of hold thy peace? Shut up. Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and, catch this, and hurt him not. Hear this preacher. Jesus and our Father God have placed limits on the devil's doing. Rebuked him, told him come out of him, and they did come out and catch this and hurt him not. Hmm. Bible says in verse 36 that they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this? We'd already discovered in verse 32 that they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was of power. And now when they see this great activity of the power of God, the man filled with a demon is, is delivered from that demon, they admit among themselves, what a word is this? Oh, I want to hear Jesus. I want to hear his words. Because there is such power and authority and dominion in his word. He speaks and it happens. One of the great stories of the New Testament in my mind is the time when Jesus is asleep on the ship and all the disciples are fearing for their lives. They're experienced on the boat and they're experienced with the sea. They think they're going to die. Master, wake up. Don't you care that we die? Jesus, I kind of picture it like this, goes... Peace be still. When he tells a demon, come out of him, the demon comes out. 
When he says, peace be still, the storm ceases and the seas are calm. When he says, Lazarus, come forth, the dead rise again. And when he says, it is finished, brother, sister, it is finished. Hallelujah. What a word is this. And notice their confession, even though they are not believers. For with authority and power, he does something. With authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. What a word is this. Hallelujah. I love the gospel. I love the teaching of Scripture. I love Jesus' miracles, His teaching, and the authority that comes behind this book. I would take this gospel over psychology any day of the week. Hallelujah. Doctors are great, but I, I know the great physician. And I'll choose him above anything that's earthly and anything that's demonic any day of the week. I kind of rejoice when October is over because television can kind of go back to normal. That means during October, television is abnormal, corrupt and evil in every way. And they got to go way back in the archives to bring up some of this evil, but they do it, you know, and they rejoice in the darkness. And they rejoice in the evil. I rejoice today also this Halloween in the power of God. What a word is this, for his word was with power. Number two, he hath power to heal and to forgive sins. Luke chapter 5, 17 through 26. He's there, he's teaching. The Pharisees, doctors of the law are sitting by. They've come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the Bible says in verse 17 that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That must mean that sometimes the power of the Lord is not present to heal them. There are many ways that people are seeking for healing today, but friends, there's really only one true source of healing, and that is the Lord himself. By his stripes, you were healed. On this particular day, there's a, an anointing that is there in that place as both believers and unbelievers are there. People from Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem were there, but also these Pharisees, doctors of the law, who will be responsible for the crucifixion of Christ later, according to God's own will. But on this day, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Thank God for the anointing. The anointing. Behold, men brought a, in a bed which a man was taken with palsy. They sought means to bring him in, to lay him before Jesus. The Bible says in verse 19, when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop. They let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst of before Jesus. Now, I, I love the picture of this. I'm sure this house packed full of people is watching, and all of a sudden they begin to see the roof of that dwelling moved aside. Man, I hope it's not raining. I'm sure there was probably one person in that house that wasn't too thrilled about it, the homeowner, probably somebody else. His insurance agent. No, this is quite a picture, isn't it? They're letting him down on his bed. One of the other gospels says with ropes, and they let him down. And his couch is sitting there right where? Right before Jesus. Wow. Good aim. Good aim. And a crowd of people, there he is. He's right before Jesus. Isn't it wonderful when we're sick and afflicted, when we have great needs and sorrows, that we can come right before Jesus? 
You have bold access to the throne of grace. You can obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we know we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Come to him right now. This man is brought by his friends, and he's before Jesus. And when Jesus saw something, I asked that question because I want you to see it. Verse 20, when he saw their faith. Sometimes faith moves mountains, and sometimes faith just opens the roof tiles. Sometimes faith just touches the hem of a garment. Sometimes faith says, even the dogs get the children's bread. Sometimes faith says, just speak the word and your servant will be healed. There are many, many ways that faith speaks. But Jesus saw this as they open up the roof, they lower this man down, he saw their faith. And by the way, let me mention, this will help next Sunday. When they were taking the man up on the roof, when they were moving the tiling, opening the roof, when they were letting him down with ropes, that was not only faith. It was faith. Jesus identifies it as faith. It was also work. You see, faith without works is dead. They could have just, well, we can't get in. It's too crowded. We tried. Let's go home. No. Strong faith, we're going to press in. We're going to get this done. We're going to get this man before Jesus because they knew that Jesus had the only answer for this man's life. And Jesus saw their faith. He said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And I will guarantee you in that room that everybody probably went like this. <gasps> because as they will say here in this passage, and because it is so very, very true, only God can forgive sin. You can go confess your sins to any man on the face of the earth, and it won't do you a plug nickel of good. You need to bring your sins to the Lord. Confess with thy mouth. Somebody said confess your faults. That's right. Confess your faults. It did not say confess your sins. We confess our sins not to a man. We confess our sins to Jesus. He's our advocate with the Father. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He alone can forgive sins. Hallelujah. Their response to that, in my mind, was a gasp. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason. <laughs> they reasoned. Saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? I love this. Their reasoning, they're not speaking it, but Jesus perceived not their words, but he perceived their thoughts. Woo! That'll scare you. Jesus knows what you're thinking right now. <laughs> and at all times, here's the fun part, he knows what the enemy is thinking. The enemies of the gospel, he knows what they're thinking. He perceived their thoughts. He answered and said to them, What reason ye in your... Now, I preach this stuff constantly, constantly, constantly. I'm going to do it till the day I die. He did not say, What reason you in your minds? He said, What reason you in your hearts? Their hearts were not right with God. They were religious. Oh, so religious. But their hearts were corrupt. Oh, you don't need to ask him to do a work in your mind. Believers, we have the mind of Christ. Let him do a work in your heart. Jesus hits them right at the point of the matter when he says, what reason ye in your hearts? Whether well, it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, rise up and walk. And catch verse 24, that you may know. You were supposed to help me there. 
but that you may know. Church, we are not guessing. We no. Why do we know? Because it's right there in the Word of God, and the Word of God is true. We are not guessing. This is not based on your opinion, my opinion, or anyone's opinion. It is simply what did the Bible say, and if the Bible says it, it's true, whether you believe it or not. God's Word is true. That you may know that the Son of Man hath what? power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. Mm. I bet that had the crowd's attention. Number one, he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. <gasps> and now Jesus steps out with his words, rise, take up thy couch, thy bed, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed unto his own house, glorifying God. Can you imagine the sight of this? Everybody that's nearby sees this man who has the palsy do exactly what Jesus told him to do. Get up, grab your couch, go your way. What a healing Jesus. Some had good seats. They were right up close. They saw it. Some were kind of pressing in in the crowd, kind of trying to look over and see what had happened. Some had great seats up there on the roof just looking down. For Jesus had honored their faith, and he met their faith with power, with power. Immediately he rose up before them, took up on the bed where he lay, departed to his house. What was he doing? He was glorifying God. Catch verse 26. And they were all amazed... That's again like astonished. They're in terror. <laughs> They're in awe. They were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with what? With fear. What did they say? Catch this. We have seen strange things today. Lord God, let us see strange things today. And I'm not talking about trick-or-treaters. Lord, could we see strange things today? Things that eye hath not seen, things that ear hath not heard, things that have not entered the heart of man, things that God has revealed unto us by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless the Lord and forget not all of his benefits. Lord, may we see those benefits. May we see those strange things today. There is nothing finer than to watch a doctor say, this can't happen. And watch it happen. Oh, we've seen strange things today. 31 years of age, I woke up from a night's sleep, couldn't see anything out of my right eye. Went to the optometrist thinking I needed glasses overnight. And uh, no, no, you need to go to an ophthalmologist. Well, I don't know what an ophthalmologist is. He said, go, so I'm going. He said, you need to go today. Went to the ophthalmologist said, oh, you've been playing with birds. I hate birds. What are you talking about? said, I can't help you, but you need to go to the retina specialist today. Went to the retina specialist, and he said, now, you don't have this, but I want you to watch this video because this is what you're going to see the rest of your life. He showed me a film on macular degeneration, which I'm familiar with with our family. And, uh, you know, trying to comfort me with the fact that you can buy oversized playing cards because you can't see. You can't drive and all of that. He, uh, praise God, I got the right retina specialist. He uh, invented this particular procedure that they did to me. And what they do is they start with a needle in your eye to deaden it. And I just want to say of that needle, that's a bummer. 
That's a bummer. And then comes that light. That was actually entertaining because the needle had already done its job. I went from 2020 in one night to 2200 in that right eye. And there was a blind spot. Sorry, Don, I couldn't see you because I got a blind spot here, you know. Two weeks later, I went back and I read every line on the eye chart. Oh, you could see it on that doctor's face. We have seen strange things today. 2020 again, and his words were, quote, I didn't think we'd be able to help you. I didn't tell him, but this is how I felt about it. You didn't. Jesus did. Well, when my wife had a car wreck and on a gravel road swerved to miss a car head on and ended up hitting a concrete bridge head on in a little Honda Accord. Miracle of miracles, little Stephen, our youngest son, wasn't in the passenger seat or he would not be with us today. Just on a particular day, he wasn't in that car. Normally would have been. She hits that concrete culvert. I get the word on the door of the house. Esther has been in a wreck. Nothing serious. Let me clue you in. When they say nothing serious, brother, it's serious. We get to the hospital, the long and the short of it, the ER doctor, and then, of course, the surgeon that comes out. And he says, well, her liver is lacerated half in two. Well, that's just blood vessels. Her liver is lacerated. And here's his quote, but she can live on half her liver. But then he goes in there and can't find anything. We have seen strange things today. And every testimony that you have of divine healing when you should have been taken out, you should have been killed, but you're still alive here sitting in the chair. Oh, we have seen strange things today. When an old persecutor of the church has a bright light shine in his face and blinds him, knocks him off his donkey in a ditch, and he confesses, Lord, what would you have me to do? We have seen strange things today. When Lazarus comes out of that tomb four days after his death, we have seen strange things today. When Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, we have seen strange things today. Lord, may we keep seeing strange things. And may they be astonished and amazed and in awe for Jesus has power to heal and to forgive sins. What the world calls strange, we call normal. What the world calls normal, we call strange. But then after all, we are a peculiar people. Number three, his power is given. In Luke 9, 1 and 2, he called his 12 disciples together and he did something. You know, they're not even converted yet. He says later in a place, when thou art converted, <laughs> when thou art converted, strengthen your brothers. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils, and to cure, I said cure. What does a fisherman and a tax collector know about curing? And to cure diseases. And he sent them to do something. Don't you ever underestimate the importance of preaching in the life of the church, in the life of the believer, and in the life of the unbeliever. Preach the word. He sent them to preach. He didn't send them to counsel. No, go counsel those folks. They need counseling. He sent them to preach. 
What were they to preach? The kingdom of God. And what were they to do? They were to heal the sick. As a side point, Luke 24, 49, you tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with something, until you be endued with power from on high. He gives power to his disciples and to us. Number four, Jesus is the mighty power of God. Jesus is the mighty power of God. The old man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, it teareth him, that he foameth again, bruising him hardly, departing from him. I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Jesus answering and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer with you? <laughs> how would you feel if you were the disciples hearing that? Faithless, faithless and perverse generation. We're not there yet, but we're heading there. Full speed ahead, we're heading there. Full speed downward. How long shall I be with you and suffer you? And then he says great words. Bring thy son hither. I, I like the King James. You know, you just can't beat a good hither now and then. Thither and hither. I bet the man was delighted to hear Jesus say, bring your son here. And as he was yet a coming... The devil threw him down. You know the devil likes to show himself. Full of pride and all of his arrogance. The devil threw him down and tear him. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, and delivered him again to his father. Church, we need to be praying for deliverance from evil. It was about two years ago I asked this congregation pretty much this time of year, I asked you, would you pray with me every day this month, deliver us from evil? It's time to get back to that. It's not just the repetition of the Lord's Prayer. It's important. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This child was delivered, and he gave him again to his father. And they were all amazed at what? that the mighty power of God, friends, Jesus is the mighty power of God. Number five. The 70 that were sent out, the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us, very important line here, through thy name. They recognized that it was the name of Jesus that did the work. I respect anybody that they call a healing evangelist who will say, I've never healed anybody. Jesus does. They were amazed, truly amazed. But they came with joy. Devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said, Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, uh, that is a uh, na 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 na. Hey, hey, goodbye. Jesus was there on the day that Satan was cast out of heaven. Would you stop being afraid of the devil? He's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour that he may not devour you. He might be going to and fro about the earth as he was in Job's day, but he can't come to my place. Hallelujah. Can't come into me. No fellowship with light and darkness. Christ and Belial. Hmm. 
I think it was kind of a shot at the devil. Hey, Satan, I was there the day you were kicked out of heaven. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You know, lightning doesn't seem to last very long. Makes a lot of noise with the thunder, but doesn't seem to last very long. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And then these words in verse 19. Behold, another reason I like the King James Bible. Because behold is a lot better than, hey, look, see. Behold, I give unto you, it is a gift. I give unto you power. Say power. The title of this message is His Awesome Power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I don't like either one of those. I don't like serpents. I don't like scorpions. Tread, that means to walk on them. I like it when we sing, Satan is under our feet. Hmm. He has given them power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And here's the best line of all. Over all, all the power of the enemy. Ooh, I like that. And I like the next part too. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. If we started today on this side of the room, and we went to every person in this room and you described all of the times that Satan made an attempt on you and it failed because you're sitting here. We would be here all day, all night, and all tomorrow and probably the next talking about the times when nothing by any means hurt us. If the devil could kill you, you'd already be dead. He hasn't because he can't. He can't. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. Mm. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith God. If God be for us. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Rejoice not that spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Number six. We're talking about his awesome power. Luke chapter 21, 26 through 28 is the chapter on the signs of the times. I don't know about you, but every time I read Matthew 24, Luke 21, I think we're living it. I would say we're on the threshold of living it. There's more to come, and if you think it's going to get better, it's not going to get better. I don't care how many pleasant commercials they make. This world is falling apart. And whatever prophet is telling you peace and prosperity, he might want to read the book of Jeremiah, and he might want to read Revelation, because perilous times shall come. So you're going to believe Jesus when he said that, or are you going to believe the prophets who say something else? Perilous times shall come. That's all right. Perilous times are here. Luke 21, I pick it up in verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming, things which are coming on the earth. Jesus said they're coming, so they're coming. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. You can hardly go a place in this country where you're not sitting on a fault, a fault line. California, Missouri, it doesn't matter. Can't even go to a national park anymore without worrying about a big old earthquake. 
powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now I want you to see two words. Verse 27, I want you to see the word then. And verse 28, I want you to see the word when. You see they're underlined. When this is happening, these signs of the times, then shall they see, they shall see, they shall see. Did you catch that? They shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Now catch this as we conclude. Luke 22 and 69, Jesus is being judged by these same religious ones who are going to send him to his death. This is just before crucifixion the next day. You know you're having a bad day when you're going to be crucified the next day. No. Jesus confronts these most evil of evil men, religious men. We say it often, religion killed our Lord and religion will kill you. And to these who are on the council, oh my, 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 beware of those that are on the council. He says, quote, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Yes, I'll lay down my life, but I'll take it up again in three days. You see, the God that we serve and His Son Jesus have all power in heaven and in earth. So whatever's going on in the world, in your world, he has the power. All the power. And he is today able to do anything and everything that is required for your salvation, for your healing, for your deliverance, according to his awesome power. His